What's up, everybody? It is my distinct pleasure to be back in the studio because our friends at Avid have released a brand new version of Pro Tools. That is Pro Tools 2021.6. With the new version of Pro Tools, a number of new features have been released, including support for M1 Max using Apple Silicon through Rosetta. And it's really interesting because even though it's still using Rosetta and it's not natively supporting the M1 chips yet, it is now setting the track limits up to 256 tracks. So you can actually open up 256 mono or stereo tracks and get this regardless of whether or not it is 44K, 48K, 96K. And so this effectively, for anyone working in 96K, which I do for some of my personal material, it quadruples the number of tracks. Yes, that's correct. Quadruples the number of tracks that you can open on a Pro Tools native session, which is just like... That's like the most number of tracks that you've probably ever been able to work with in a Pro Tools session. Now, are you going to be able to come close to that? Probably not. I mean, we'll see. It really just depends on the software that you are using, the plugins that you are using, and whether or not they're natively supported on the M1 chip yet, and how the whole system as a whole, you know, audio, plugins, processing, everything going on, right? It's going to depend on all of that, you know, the, so the mileage is going to vary from system to system. But that being said, it's really, really interesting that with this new version of Pro Tools, it is now allowing for 256 tracks. That's really cool. So another new feature that I predicted, if you recall, in my last video, I literally said, we're going to be able to customize the UI. <laughs> we're going to be able to fully... Just do whatever we want in the UI. And so what did I say? Not only can you dynamically switch between the classic mode and the dark mode, which is really cool without having to close down Pro Tools, you can also go ahead and start adjusting things like text brightness, track, header, saturation. So instead of it being gray, you can drag the saturation up and it starts to color itself in, just like the track headings. So I like to set that a little bit. Track header brightness, you know, edit selection. So you see that edit selection. I can make it really light, make it really stand out. You have some reset options as you start dragging things around. So you notice a reset option comes up and I can drag it back down to 50 where it was. Make that a little bit brighter. That's cool. I like that. Timeline brightness. Well, obviously I'm in dark mode, right? So that's where it starts. I want to darken it just a little bit. Not too much, but just a touch, I think. Make it fully white with, you know, dark waveforms like in Cubase do whatever you want you know what i mean so here we go with the clips waveform brightness or darkness you want to go full cue base on it go for it right in general this is probably going to be my go-to setting and you can obviously come back in here and change it however you want that's a really really cool uh new feature for pro tools um, another feature, which I've got to say, I haven't dealt with too much personally because, um, I sidechain things very little, but sometimes I do sidechain things and this will be important for, um, the guys out there that do a lot of sidechaining or just pay attention to this feature in general, which is called delay compensation. So I'm going to play a section of this song with, I always keep this on right because it's going to automatically compensate for the processing that you're doing and plugins and that sort of thing and offset the playback by a number of samples uh, by calculating the delay so that it it's it's kind of a mathematical thing it's getting real scientific but basically we're telling it to play a lot of audio at once and we're also telling it to go through instead of hardware that we have we're telling it to go through software la2as and 1176s and SSL channel strips and just all sorts of stuff, right? So when we put these plugins on here, it's going to it's going to take time to process that audio and then stream it back. And so the time that it takes 
Pro Tools will calculate that and then offset the playback by that number of samples so that when you hear it back in your headphones or in your speakers, it's still all playing back at the same time and you don't hear any delay. So if we play this section of the song. You hear how it gets all smeary and nasty whenever I turn that off, but then as soon as I turn it back on, it all clears up. And turn it back on. You hear all the presents come back. You hear everything sort of feel like, okay, now it's like playing evenly and feel, things feel like they're in time and bouncing in time and stuff like that. So. That's not by accident, right? That's really, really a powerful setting within Pro Tools that allows that to happen, and that's called delay compensation. And Pro Tools does that automatically, and you can display that delay compensation by coming in here to View, Mix Window Views, and Delay Compensation, and it'll tell you if there's any compensation happening on any channels, right? And if there's any delay being caused by processing on certain channels. Right, so you'll you'll have these references here, and you will be able to do some plus or minus tweaking of those if you need to. Um, but in general, what this new version allows is um, for automatic delay compensation of buses that are connected via sidechain, which Pro Tools native didn't do before. It's just one of those things that native Pro Tools didn't do, but HD did, right? And that's... HD does a number of things that Pro Tools native doesn't do that are kind of just like, you know, you, you think these are the Pro Tools, but there's Pro Pro Tools beyond this, <laughs> right? And that's the, that's the ultimate version. But essentially, more, and, and this is part of what I predict as well, more and more of those features are also being brought forward into the normal version of Pro Tools, such as over time I've seen Heat come across, I've seen now this feature come across, more tracks. That is really it. That is all I've got for this particular video. You know, I just wanted to keep it real short and sweet and just sort of show how, you know, this version of Pro Tools, it's, it's just elevating the game just more and more and more with every release, um, you know, in the saga of the M1 support for Pro Tools. It's just going to, I think, get better and better from here, especially as it starts to support the native chips without having to run through Rosetta. We'll see where the track count goes. I mean, there's 2,000 tracks. <laughs> it sucks. It's 10 times what it is. 200 tracks now on Pro Tools native, right? 256 tracks, but it's 10 times that. It's like 2,048 or something ridiculous on Pro Tool, on HDX systems now. And it's just, you know, yeah, when you need to record a symphony at studio a at abbey road or whatever you know it's what you have to that's what you have to rely on um but i think for my purposes in the foreseeable future this is going to be pretty fantastic until next time